We have known for a few days that Respawn would be dropping a brand new game set in the Titanfall universe. I believe the rumor mill began to churn with a video by YouTuber The Quartering, and then the news gained even more traction when Twitter user Rod Breslow tweeted that according to his sources, Respawn will be announcing and releasing a game called Apex Legends on Monday, February 4th, 2019, which is set to be a hero battle royale game for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. The Twitter post also added, quote, Apex Legends will feature classes heroes with unique abilities, maximum of 60 players per server, maximum of 3 players per team, trios to complement each other. No Titans, just as Titanfall and Titanfall 2, Apex Legends will run on a modified version of Valve's Source Engine. Microtransactions and loot boxes for cosmetic items and in-game content are said to be in Apex Legends, with a very similar approach to that in Overwatch. Lo and behold, Monday, February 4th finally arrived, and indeed, Respawn announced and released Apex Legends, which plays exactly as described by sources who leaked the information. I actually managed to play a few hours of it, and as far as Battle Royale games go, not gonna lie, it's not half bad. The emphasis on squads with different hero characters, each with their own unique abilities, definitely adds an interesting twist to the formula, and core mechanics feel buttery smooth, as one might expect from Respawn. And I can really see this game picking up a lot of steam if they keep extrapolating on what is a very solid foundation, especially given it's free to play. Now, I personally suck at battle royales and the genre is just not for me, so I don't see myself investing a huge amount of time in this game, but what few hours I've played so far definitely showed a lot of promise for battle royale enthusiasts. I'd even go as far as saying that this was probably the most fun I've had with a battle royale game so far, though preferences will obviously differ from person to person. Now, where the news gets a little grim, particularly for fans of Respawn games, is that those who have been anticipating a brand new Titanfall game for some time will probably be waiting for a while longer. The following information was first reported by news outlet Eurogamer, which published an interview they did with Apex lead producer Drew McCoy, who was brutally honest about some of the decisions they made surrounding this game, which was kind of refreshing. After some discussion about potential mobile and Switch ports of the title, and after confirming that crossplay would not be a feature that would be coming to Apex due to the way systems were set up early on that can't be reconciled after the fact, he talked a bit about skepticism he's expecting from the general crowd and trying to mitigate that by just being completely transparent with their community and player base. He began by explaining why they decided to launch the game out of the blue without any sort of major marketing push in the days leading up to its launch. On that topic, he had this to say, there are some people who think there are too many battle royale games or it's a fad. The world thinks we're making Titanfall 3 and we're not. This is what we're making. To try and convince a skeptical audience for months with trailers and hands-on articles, we're just like, let the game speak for itself. It's the most powerful antidote to potential problems. We are doing a free-to-play game with essentially loot boxes after we were bought by EA, and it's not Titanfall 3. It's the perfect recipe for a marketing plan to go awry. So why have that? Let's just ship the game and let players play. Holy shit, gotta say, even if not everyone's going to be satisfied with Respawn's announcement, I love that McCoy is just giving it to us straight like this. I've also gotta hand it to them, their release strategy was a very smart idea given the current landscape of distrust against game publishers and developers. Case in point, just look at what's happening with Anthem. There is so much trepidation surrounding that game after a bug-ridden demo made many question whether the game needs more time to cook in the oven, and after a screenshot showing an early iteration of the game's microtransactions, which seemed to feature $20 items that Bioware assured are not final prices, raised questions about the rate at which players will earn in-game currency, and about the final pricing of purchasable items, details which have yet to be fully provided. Apex Legends completely bypassed all that, by just releasing the game for free and letting people gauge for themselves. Now, on the topic of Titanfall, yes, McCoy has confirmed that they are not making Titanfall 3 right now, which will be heartbreaking for fans of the series. You may recall that Titanfall 2 was incredibly well received, garnering acclaim from both reviewers and consumers alike with its incredible single-player campaign and a compelling competitive multiplayer mode that was bolstered by smooth mobility features like wall running and double jumping, and by the unique ability 
ability to seamlessly call in the titular Titans, but the game's sales suffered due to its less than ideal release timing. The game launched sandwiched right between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, two juggernauts of the first-person shooter genre, and the end result was that Titanfall 2 tragically underperformed commercially. Now, many have accused EA for forcing Titanfall 2 to release during such an inopportune time period, but there might be more to it than that, apparently. Responding to a comment in his article about the upcoming Apex Legends, Kotaku editor Jason Schreier provided this insight. The same source I cited above told me that Titanfall 2's release timing was entirely Respawn's decision. My understanding is that Respawn wanted Titanfall 2 to go head-to-head -head against Call of Duty, and that Battlefield 1 was originally supposed to come out earlier, September-ish, but DICE had a delay Battlefield 1, and by the time that happened, it was too late to bump back Titanfall 2 because of various marketing deals that already put together. So Battlefield 1 wound up coming out right next to Titanfall 2, which made nobody happy. In other words, if Jason's sources are to be believed, Respawn made the conscious decision to compete head-to-head -head with Call of Duty, and then an unforeseen delay for Battlefield 1 is what caused Titanfall 2 to be sandwiched between two juggernauts, with a delay for Titanfall 2 being too late at that point. So it sounds like we might be looking at a combination of both inopportune decisions, bad luck, and a series of unfortunate events. Regardless of what ultimately led to Titanfall 2's commercial disappointment, the bottom line remains that just about everyone believes Titanfall deserves another chance with a sequel that will be released during a more appropriate window, which is what makes it all the more heartbreaking to hear that Titanfall 3 is not in development. This especially stings given many of us were under the impression that Respawn was actively working on Titanfall 3 based on various reports. For starters, a Kotaku article from back in November 2017 reported in an article discussing EA's $400 million purchase and acquisition of Respawn that, according to documentation sent by sources, Titanfall 3 was among the listed planned projects. In their more recent article reporting news of the impending announcement for Apex Legends, Kotaku's Jason Schreier reported that Titanfall 3 was well into development at one point, with an internal release window of no later than late 2018, due to fears that the technology used to make the game would start to feel dated. Jason in turn speculated that either Apex Legends would act as a stopgap between Titanfall 2 and Titanfall 3 to give Respawn time to update the engine for the sequel, or that Apex Legends was simply what was initially Titanfall 3 turned out to be. Well, based on the fact that McCoy admitted that they're not working on Titanfall 3 currently, it would seem as though the latter theory is true. We know for a fact that the third game in the series was in development at some point, but based on recent developments and revelations, the most likely scenario seems to be that it eventually evolved and shifted to become Apex Legends. As for why the pivot happened, the most common assumption will likely be that EA pressured Respawn into creating a monetizable Battle Royale live service, but according to Respawn, this was all entirely the studio's decision. Here's what McCoy told website Game Informer. Not to be throwing EA under the bus, but this wasn't the game they were expecting. I had to go to executives and show it to them and explain it and not convince, but more, hey, trust us, this is the thing you want out of us. As a corporation, they can only quantify based on past data, and they've never done anything like this before. There's a giant rainbow question mark over revenue projections for this game. They're like, we don't know, we can't predict. This is a game we had to say, this is what we want to do, help us get there. They had no hand in development or anything about this game. So yeah, ultimately, Respawn wanted to make this game rather than the other way around. It would seem as though it was Respawn's decision to go with their own spin on Battle Royale rather than a sequel to Titanfall that's now likely many years away. Speaking to website VG247, Apex Legends design director Mackie McCandlish confirmed that there is currently no separate team working on a new Titanfall game in parallel or anything like that, stating, quote, This is the game being made by the Titanfall team, Apex Legends. The Titanfall universe is continuing. It takes place in the Titanfall universe. This is the next game from the team that made Titanfall. There is no other team that makes Titanfall. That doesn't mean there never could be another team that makes Titanfall. 
Going back to the Eurogamer article, McCoy commented further on how Apex Legends came to be, noting how progress towards it began after Titanfall 2 when the developer experimented with Battle Royale and decided that, rather than making it a mode, it would be its own comprehensive standalone. Perhaps this would all be a lot easier to swallow for Titanfall fans if Apex Legends gameplay remotely resembled Titanfall in key aspects, but those who try the game out will quickly discover that it completely forgoes many of its iconic mobility features like double jump and wall running and the hallmark titans that made the Titanfall series so unique. Apex Legends might take place in the Titanfall universe and might have a few similar assets and visual elements, but it doesn't play anything like a Titanfall game, which is probably in large part why Respawn forwent including the word Titanfall in the title, which was a smart idea. For many fans, not adapting Titanfall's unique mobility options and the ability to seamlessly summon mechs seemed like a huge missed opportunity to really make Apex stand out. But according to McCoy, Respawn experimented with ways of adding all of these mechanics into the game, and he explained why the team felt they had to scrap so many of those iconic Titanfall features in the end, stating the following. When we started Apex Legends, we were building off Titanfall 2, and we didn't know we weren't going to have double jump or wall running or titans. The choice to not have those came about because of playtesting against our goals, to have a strategic, learnable, masterable, deep game. We had things like wall running and double jumping for a long time. We had triple jump for a while. They make combat really hard to beat and comprehend. You can't predict where players come from or you're pushing them to, and things would happen to you more than you would would predict and respond against. So it's really fun to do, but it's really bad for combat legibility. The Titans in Titanfall 1 and 2 were meant to be a power fantasy. You're supposed to think, all right, I can call it in, I can power it up and feel like a badass for a little while. Then it'll probably blow up and you have a chance to do it again. So we were prototyping that and they were a power up and that was really detrimental to a battle royale. Battle royales are supposed to be like poker. Everyone comes to the table with the same possibilities. If we ever balanced the Titan down to where they were not a destructive force on the match, it was like betraying that power fantasy like they were made out of paper, a wet cardboard back. It was not worth it. In other words, those mechanics simply didn't work well within the confines of an expansive battle royale, and I trust that they do know better. I would hope, however, that they eventually find a way to implement a separate mode, maybe, that brings back Titanfall mechanics, and Respawn CEO Vince Zampella didn't seem to rule out the prospect. Responding to a tweet asking why there is no wall running and the like, he responded with, quote, wasn't as fun and balanced, we'll try new stuff as we go. As for why Respawn even decided to set Apex Legends in the Titanfall universe, when it feels so far removed from the series, McCoy talked about how he wanted to explore the Wild West side of the Titanfall universe. I personally don't buy this excuse. I feel like set in the Titanfall universe is more for marketing buzz than anything else. It feels like they're using an established brand, so the game gets more coverage, though I like that they didn't put Titanfall in the title, and at least being set in that universe does leave the door open for features of that franchise to be added down the line. So that's sort of where we are at with all this. On one side, I think few people will deny that Apex Legends is actually a pretty damn good game in its own right that mixes up the Battle Royale formula enough to stand on its own, with general feedback being quite positive overall from what I've seen, and with the game being free to play to boot. I also have to commend Respawn for how smooth the launch has been. I haven't encountered any major technical issues, server seems stable, and it's just an all-around polished product, an impressive feat given the title never underwent a proper beta or stress test. On the other side, Titanfall fans are understandably peeved that their hopes and dreams were crushed so thoroughly when rumblings seem to suggest Titanfall 3 would be Respawn's next big project. And to be fair, that was apparently true for some time before development took a turn. My hope is that if Apex Legends ends up succeeding, it will act as a stepping stone towards them being able to go all out with Titanfall 3. Do keep in mind that Respawn's last project, Titanfall 2, was something of a commercial failure, so it's entirely possible that the studio needed to output something more financially viable before they could move on to riskier ventures. Which is why I personally hope that Apex Legends does well. It is a good and polished game so far, it is made by a very talented studio worth supporting, I love how transparent the developers have been about points of contention, and if this free-to-play battle royale helps give Respawn more time and resources 
Genesis to really nail Titanfall 3, I am all for it. I do worry that the trend of monetizable games giving companies less reasons to make games more frequently could mean that Respawn will end up just riding the Apex Legends wave and leave Titanfall fans hanging, but I would hope that won't be the case. Speaking of which, Apex Legends' monetization scheme is one aspect I am skeptical about. The game includes both Fortnite-style Battle Pass and Shop, as well as Overwatch-style loot boxes and unlockable items. All cosmetic, mind you. Now, Apex Legends obviously gets a lot more leeway in that it is a free-to-play game, meaning it has to make its money back somehow, but the existence of purchasable loot boxes in particular is something I'm not very fond of. Going to the Apex Packs page in the game will detail a couple things, starting with the odds of obtaining items of varying rarity. You are always guaranteed to earn common and rare items, there's a 24.8% chance you'll earn an epic item, and there's a 7.4% chance you'll earn a legend item. While this is certainly much better than the odds that other EA games like say FIFA 19 and its vague less than 1% chance of obtaining the most coveted items, a 7.4% chance still means you'll be opening quite a few loot boxes before obtaining a random legendary item. Now it's good to know these loot boxes don't offer any duplicates, though I found that one of the three item slots per pack tends to be wasted by a paltry offer of crafting metals, and if you happen to have really bad luck, you will be guaranteed a legendary item every 30 packs, though I would hardly call that generous when that's still roughly $30 worth of packs if we don't count some of the free packs you can earn by leveling up. It does help, however, that there are options to purchase items directly without the need to gamble, whether it be via Battle Pass progression, the shop's featured items containing stuff that can only be bought with the Apex Coins premium currency, and others that can only be bought with the Legend Tokens in-game currency, or through crafting medals that can be spent in the game's hero or weapons gallery to unlock desired skins individually. It's too early to gauge whether the grind involved in earning free packs, crafting medals, and legend tokens is decently reasonable, and I still don't know yet what the progression rate of the battle pass looks like. I'm sure dedicated players will do a thorough analysis of the game's monetization system in time though, so for now, I'll leave it at that, and you can always test it out for yourself. All I'll say for now is that the presence of loot boxes is still disconcerting, even if it is far from the worst version of the system we have seen. One aspect I do absolutely hate is that some of the game's playable legends are locked behind in-game or premium currency. These characters are very much key content that I feel should be offered for free without requiring grind or paying up. The only reason I managed to unlock one of the two locked legends from the outset was because I was given a thousand Apex coins for being a member of Origin Access. A subscription that I don't take pleasure in, mind you, but it's the only way for me to play games like Anthem early for potential coverage on them, so that's that. But yeah, locking characters behind currency is plain and simply not cool in my opinion, especially when games like Overwatch make their heroes immediately available to everyone as soon as they're released, and I hope this is one scheme that Apex Legends will consider retracting. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I have on Apex Legends. The game itself is quite good, it's fun, and it's for the most part pretty polished, albeit with a few imperfections here and there, but the sketchy inclusion of loot boxes and locked legends isn't ideal, and it is heartbreaking to know that we won't see a proper sequel to Titanfall for a very long time. These are one man's thoughts and opinions anyway, I'd love to hear what your impressions are of the game if you've played it, and what your thoughts are on prospects for a Titanfall 3 in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.